Good morning, everybody. This is Lori Meyer, and I am going to be showing you how to make this card with some of the products in the new mini catalog and also one of the stamp sets in the celebration brochure. Before I get going, I wanted to say thank you so much to Martinette and Sue for their amazing projects this morning. I have been watching and have already been very inspired by what you ladies are doing. So I appreciate you taking the time to share what you've done. And I also wanted to just mention that I am going to do my best to look at the comments, but my setup is not one where I can see those comments really quickly. So I do apologize if you ask a question or make a comment and I don't respond really quickly. But I do want to show you the card that we're gonna be making. It's a really cute little fun fold. It has a nice little bounded side. And then it a square card on the right side that opens up and gives you just a, a nice little space to make a card. The thing that I'm going to be focusing on the most today is showing you a couple of different ways to use the new gilded leafing. And I'm going to show you how to do the hummingbird. And then there's also another gilded leafing that's underneath this ribbon. And there are two different ways that I've actually done the gilded leafing. So I really hope you enjoy this. And the one thing that I will say about it is, I didn't really know a lot about gilded leafing, I will be completely honest, and I scoured YouTube and Pinterest and looked at a couple of videos and got a couple of tips and tricks from folks. And from some of my things that went well and things that didn't go so well, I wanted to share some things that I've learned. So hopefully it will be a little bit easier for you. But I really encourage you just just jump in, play with this. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's really kind of cool. I will say if you are a person who um, doesn't like a little bit of a mess, you're just going to have to accept that you're going to get a little bit of a mess. And I'm going to show you some ways that you can minimize that as well. So let's just jump in. What I'm going to start with is the focal point. And this is made beginning with a piece of white cardstock. And that white cardstock is cut to three and five eighths square. So that is what we are going to use to actually do the focal point and create the hummingbird and also do some other stamping. Now let me show you this set that I'm going to be using. It's called A Touch of Ink and it is one of the celebration stamp sets. I love hummingbirds. I will never get sick of watching them come to the have at our house. They are just mesmerizing. So the little hummingbird is the first thing that caught my eye. And then there are quite a few really nice sentiments and a really pretty script. And the stamps are actually pretty large. There are two sheets that you get in the stamp set and they're, they're really nice. So what I have done with this is I have set up my Stamparatus and I just wanted to show you how I've set it up as I'm moving along here. Because what we're going to be doing is we are going to do a little bit of stamping. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the hummingbird. And let me tell you why. If you are using the gilded leafing, one of the most important things that you should know is that if you have any stamping on the same piece of paper, that ink from the stamping needs to be completely dry before you use the gilding and before you use the heat and stick powder. Because if it's not, you run the risk of getting the heat and stick powder onto any ink that is wet. So the order that I'm going to do this, I'm first going to stamp the hummingbird and I'm going to gild that. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add the flowers. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do the gilding. 
and this is where you feel like a kid kindergartner it is get your smock out you're back in school and you're just kind of playing what I've done on my Stamparatus, and let me get this so it's better in the camera. I think that's better. I've made some marks, and this is going to make sense as we go through. But right up here is a little upper left mark. Down here, a lower right mark. And I've told myself that that's where I need to position the paper to do some of the stamping. And the first thing is that I need to get that hummingbird all set. So I'm going to go ahead and place this into my Stamparatus. And the ink, if we want to call it ink, that you use to do the gilding is Versamark. One thing that I learned, and let me show you, pictures are always... I learned that you really need to have a nice, juicy Versamark pad. I tried, this was my first attempt at the gilding. Didn't go so well. Then I figured out, okay, if I get the pad a little bit more juicy, it works a lot better. And that was one of the keys. So that's a tip as you are doing this. And what you're going to do, I am off camera a little bit on the right. I am putting the Versamark onto the Hummingbird stamp. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in my hummingbird and I'm going to do it one more time I just want to make sure that there is enough of the Versamark ink on that image because the next thing we're going to do looks an awful lot like embossing heat embossing we're going to use the heat and stick powder I had not used this before. I'm sure many of you have. It has definitely been around for a while. It is great for glitter and other things. And one thing that it's really, really good for is the leafing, the gilding. And I am going to do like you normally would with embossing powder and take Take my heat and stick powder and if you guys haven't used this um, one thing I did notice it has a little bit of a unique odor and I can't really describe it it's not super offensive it's just a little bit on the I don't know maybe sweet side sort of and you will definitely get used to it it's it's not it's not bad. And I'm just flicking that off. I think you may be able to see that I've got the, the powder on there. And then one thing that I always do when I'm doing heat embossing is I purposely put the cap back on the container, put the receptacle container as far away as I possibly can before I pull in the heat gun. And from experience, you probably know that if you don't do that, you are going to have powder everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to melt the heat and stick powder. And then we're going to put the gilded leafing on top. This is the second tip I want to give you. When you do heat embossing and you are using the normal powder that we, we use, one thing that we probably all like to do is heat up the powder until it looks pretty smooth. When you're using the heat and stick powder, you don't want to overheat because if you do, some of the stickiness is going to go away. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of watch, just like you do with other kinds of heat embossing, we're going to watch and when that powder is melted, we're done. The less time you put the heat on, the better. And I'm just going to heat up my heat gun off camera. Sorry if that is making a noise. And I'm just making sure it's nice and warm. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. And I am literally 
going to try to just pass over this one time and let it melt. And I'm not going to go back. I'm just going to allow that powder to melt. And once it's done, we're done. It's that quick. You want to be as quick as you can with this. And I think you can probably see that it, it's kind of like the, the shining, shininess that you get with um, the regular kind of heat embossing. Now we are going to do the gilding. And I'm out of the way because one of the ladies that I saw on YouTube said that one of the first things she did was she transferred all of her leafing from this jar into a tin. And the reason is you will find that this gets bigger. It's almost as if it grows from the inside when you actually let it out of the container. To help minimize some of the messiness, I'm using a paper plate that has a lip. I'm going to place my stamped piece down. And now I am simply going to grab some of the leafing. You don't need a lot. It does tend to stick, maybe occasionally, where you don't want it to stick. And what you're going to do is you're really just going to push that leafing into all the areas where you have that powder that has melted and is sticky. It's acting like a glue and you just want to get that leafing on as much as you can. And I can see there's one area that looks like it's not happy and that's okay. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got as much of this pressed in as I can. Now that looks really funky. It looks disastrous. The next thing we're going to do is just gently start to kind of push it off. And I can see that I didn't the top. I'm going to use the other one to finish off the card, but this will give you an idea. And now you're going to start to see the outline of the bird. Then if you take a brush, and I'm using a brush that I used to stencil years and years ago, you're going to put very, very, very little pressure and just do kind of circular motions and go clockwise, counterclockwise. And what you're doing, obviously, is the leafing is sticking where that powder melted. And then the other bits are coming off because they don't have any powder underneath. And this one isn't coming out perfectly. I don't think I got enough Versamark, especially on the upper wings. And I do have another one that I purposely did, just in case. But as I continue to just very gently take this off, you can see the image. So my issue on this one was simply not putting enough Versamark on those wings. Otherwise, this would be perfectly fine. What I like to do when I'm doing the leafing is I like to have an image nearby of the stamp so I know when I've been able to get all the pieces completed. And sometimes if you take that leafing and you go back if there is stickiness, which there is not here because I didn't do a great job with the Versamark, you can actually get the leafing to go on even after you have kind of taken it off. So we are going to swap these, but that's how I created this one as well. 
And when you are done, you can take a little bit of a lighter brush. The bristles aren't quite as, as hard, a softer brush. And just go around the image. And if there are any pieces of gold, you're just going to be pulling those off. Don't throw this away. This can still be used. And what you're going to do with that is just like you reclaim any kind of embossing powder that you don't use, just put it back into whatever container you have. And even those little itty bitty pieces you'll be able to use with, with the um, heat and stick powder. So even though that Versamark didn't work for me, I could have very easily taken two more seconds just to make sure that I had evenly stamped and then this piece would have been fine. But we're going to go ahead and move on as if I had done it okay that way. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to do some stamping. And these flowers are also from the beautiful A Touch of Ink set. And I wanted to show you something that I like to do. And I bet many of you do the same thing. I like to use my Stamparatus so that I can position the same stamp in multiple places on my paper without moving the stamp, but moving the paper. And here's what I'm talking about. If I put this piece back and I use the upper left and bottom right little visuals that I marked on the grid paper, that's where I had the paper when I stamped the hummingbird. Well, I'm going to be able to stamp my flowers and I've already positioned this so that I know where the flowers are going to go. And the first pass, when I do the flowers, I'm going to be doing the bottom left. And I've got everything all set. So that's going to come in on the bottom left. I'm going to move the paper around, and I'll show you that in a second, so that I can leave the stamp where it is, and I'll get the second image. Then I'll move the paper one more time, and I'll get the third image. One thing about this stamp set really called to me, and that was to use markers. I love using markers when I can put different colors on an image and not be super precise. And then if I have multiples of the same image, I find it fun to try and kind of change up the colors just a little bit. And markers tend to do that really well. So the Markers that I'm going to use on the stamp are all from in colors. And this is again where I feel like a little kindergartner. And I'm just going to color in the flowers. And the beauty of this too with a marker is if you don't get it perfectly fine the first time, you can go back in and you can add a little color here and there and fill in the blanks and you don't have to be super perfect. So I'm just pulling where I know the flowers are on this stamp, adding in some yellow for the middle. And what's also fun with markers is even if you get some ink from another marker onto, let's say I get some pink on this green marker, the world has not ended because I can scribble it off and everything will be fine. Or when I get the blended colors on the, um, the image, it just looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna put that back in, position the arm, and I have this set up. So the hummingbird is going to look like it is feeding from that flower. And if I see any areas that are a little bit missing on that particular pass, I can just go back really quickly and add a little bit of color. 
And again, perfection is not what we're going for here. It's more of the, the image. So I've got my bottom left. I've got this one done. Now I want to do the upper left. And for me, I have to have little cheat sheets. So top flowers. That means that I am going to position things so that everything will align the way I want them to be. And I wrote that in pencil. So if I put everything in where my little pencil marks are, theoretically, if I did this right and I lined it up, then those flowers, hold on, those flowers are going to go where I want them to go. And the beauty of this is obviously I can make sure that when I pull the plate over that the flowers are going where I want them to be. So I haven't moved this flower. I moved my paper. But I'm going to get a completely different look. And I am simply going back and I am putting in the same colors that I did. This is a little off camera, which is why I'm trying to do it kind of quickly. And what's nice is I'm probably not going to get the colors in the exact same place that I did the first time. So it's going to look a little bit different. And I want it to look a little different. I don't want everything to be exactly the same when I'm doing this. And I can also change the colors if I want to. The next one I do, I will color on camera because I know this is not fun to watch when you can't see what I am doing. So I've got that one colored. I'm just going to bring it in and pull it down. And I definitely need to go back and fill in a couple of, of places, which is easy enough. I can just take my marker, fill those in, make sure that I've got a nice image up there. And we're going to add a little more pink. And then I'm going to add the one on the bottom. So again, I'm moving the paper and not moving the stamp. So I've got one more that I want to add, and that is going to be the one on the bottom middle. And if I place that, this is my cheat sheet. I know that's how I want that one to go. So if I put my magnets down and I just kind of take a look and make sure everything's going to be where I want it to be. I'm going to do one final, one final flower. And what's kind of nice too is when you're doing the scribbling, you can be fast again, because with watercolor, just like Martinette was doing this morning, perfection, and getting everything to look like it is, you know, nice and tidy is definitely not what you're going for in watercolor. It's just more of a, an image. It's giving you a hint of what it is that you're looking at. And you can see that I'm doing color over color. I'm really not worried about it. And if I do get any ink that is kind of blending on my markers, I can just scribble it off and life will be fine. So I'll put that back in. And I think I may have lost the video here. But um, we're going to keep going. And if I need to redo this, I will. So there we go. There we have the... the stamped image. The other piece that I wanted to show you for the gilding is on the side of the card. And before I move this, I do need to put my sentiment in. And I have that on the top plate. And for that one, I am just going to use Thanks, Patricia, for letting me know. Hopefully I didn't swear too loudly when I saw that there was an issue of the video playing. If I did, forgive me. 
um, I'm just putting the sentiment in as well. And I really love this thinking of you. I'm using markers on this one. And this is the Misty Moonlight color. And I'm just going to fill in the blanks on that real quick. And what's also cool with the markers is if you think about sentiments, you can do some fun things with letters. You could make the top of the sentiment a blue. You could change that into greens as you go down. And you can just do some really fun things. And it's all with the way that you, you blend and you use those markers. So that's kind of cool. All right, that's going to be good enough. So that's the front. And now what I want to show you is another very, very cool way to do some of the gilding. And this is with a completely different adhesive. And I'm quickly going to tell you how I made this card. There are not many piece parts. And I'm just going to run through what those cards are, or pieces are. I started with Magenta Madness. It's cut to four and a quarter by 11. And it's scored at five and a half, obviously in the middle, and then at six and three quarters. And what you're going to do is you're going to score it and burnish it right in the middle. And then the front part is going to fold toward you. That's where the six and three quarter piece is. You're going to put tear and tape between the six and three quarter score line and the five and a half and take that off and then fold that over. And that's how you get the side. And then you have your opening for your card. Once you've done that, you're going to want to put a little notch in the top and in the bottom. So you will end up with a card that looks like that. And what I used was the medium daisy punch. I just turned it around, obviously, so I could see, and I put that right in the top, and I punched my hole. And that way I have a nice little notch. The other pieces for this card include just jade. There is a four inch square piece. That's going to be the background, the frame on the front, and a piece of just jade that is one inch by four inches. And that's going to go on the side. Then you've got DSP from the flowers for every season. Misty Moonlight piece, this is three and seven eighths square. And then another piece that is three and seven eighths by seven eighths. The three and seven eighths square goes right behind your focal point, And the other piece goes on the side. And what I wanted to show you is the most fun way to do another kind of gilding. So I'm going to get the paper out of the way. And I'm going to show you how to do the gilding that is right underneath that ribbon. And what we're going to do is I've taken the smaller piece of Just Jade and the smaller piece of the DSP and put those two together. They will end up going right on the left hand side of the card. And the way that you gild this is just the most awesome thing that I have seen in a little while. Take a piece of tear and tape and forgive my head if my head gets in the way of the camera. And I'm just going to try and put that kind of down the middle. If it's not completely straight, that's okay. And then I am going to trim it off from the back. Just try to get it as flush to the edge as I can. And I will take the wax paper off that tear and tape. And now we're going to gild this. This is fun and it's very easy and it is very addictive. And what you may want to try and do when you're using the leafing is play around with different adhesives and see how they work with the gilding. 
But here's what I'm going to do. I'm taking a couple of pieces of that leafing and just like I did on the hummingbird, I'm just pressing into that tear and tape. And where I have excess, I'm just going to move that down to where the tear and tape is exposed. And I'll grab another little piece and add that. And I'm just trying to get every part of the tear and tape covered with the gilding. And don't worry about using too much because any excess you're going to put right back into whatever container you have your leafing. And then with light circular motions from your finger, you can take that gilding off. And it leaves the coolest, absolutely coolest finish. And if you kind of tap it a little bit, get that excess off. If you come back with that brush, you can very carefully brush off anything that is outside the lines of your tear and tape. And this is actually much easier and much more forgiving than using the Versamark on stamps. And the Versamark on stamps is not hard. This tends to, just because it is so uniform in the adhesive, it is really easy to get that gilding to stay where you want it to be. And again, when you're done, just take the excess and put it right back into the container that you've got your other leafing in and you'll be able to use that on another project. So I am not going to put this card together per se, but I'm going to show you how it all comes together. And you will see from the example what I'm talking about. So the way that I put this whole thing together is for the right side, for the square piece, just jade behind the DSP in the front. I put the focal point right on top, glued it directly onto the top. And then I put some dimensionals behind that just so it would pop up a little bit. So this becomes the right hand side of the card. Then on the left hand side, I glued down the piece that I just did. So I would actually glue this directly to the left hand side, right straight down. And then I got some ribbon. This is the really pretty crinkled seam binding ribbon. And I put that right around. It does hide a lot of the, the gilding, but I still think it's really very pretty. The gold shows through and wrapped that around. And then I created a little bow from a bow maker using the same ribbon and put that right on the top. So the big things that I really wanted to focus on today included mostly using the gilded leafing and how to do the hummingbird and a couple of keys. One is, unlike what I did when I was doing this live, make sure you have enough Versamark stamped image. When you pour the powder on top, heat and stick, excuse me, make sure that you have everything covered. And then when you melt it, don't put the heat on for very long. When it's melted, take the heat off, and that way it's going to stay sticky. And you can put your leafing right on top, and then you can brush it off. The other thing is you can put one stamp on the plate of your Stamparatus and move your paper around. And that way you can arrange image, the same image on different places, and it will look 
completely different. The other gilding that we did was a really fun way to add the leafing, and that was with tear and tape. And you put the tear and tape where you want the leafing to go. You put the leafing on top, press it down, make sure that you've covered all the areas that have adhesive, and then rub it off. And this is definitely one of the easiest ways to use the leafing. And then super fun, easy, fun fold that could be used for any occasion. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And I apologize that I did not do a good job on this one. But um, this was done exactly the same way. And I really hope you give this a try. Just play. You're going to get gold on your fingers. You're probably going to get gold on your work surface. And you know what? That's fine. And make sure that you stick around because Carolyn Bosley will be sharing a project in just a few minutes at 1115. And we also have, I think, at least three other folks after her. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope you really do give the gilded leafing a try. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. See you later.